In Volume 1, Issue 1 of the Crossroads Neighborhood Newsletter, Curtis and Jennifer Parker made their intentions known. The paper read, There are ties that bind us. We socialize together. We shop at the same places. Our children attend the same schools. Some of us even work and worship together. And we care about what happens to the communities we live in. We're at a crossroads. We must take responsibility for the future of our community. That was 20 years ago. Crossroads News is still focused on the future of the community. From a neighborhood newsletter that was distributed to the local homeowners associations to a thriving multimedia enterprise, Crossroads News is now the premier weekly community newspaper serving the East Metro Atlanta suburbs and South DeKalb County. Not only did Crossroads News grow over the years, but so did its children. Jamie French Parker was only three years old when her parents started Crossroads News. Some of my earliest memories of the paper uh, are when they used to work out of our basement in our home on Wesley Chapel, and I would just be sent upstairs to go to bed while they continued to work late at night. Uh, my other earliest memories are just passing out the papers and always bringing them wherever we went. If we're walking into the mall, we have 10 copies that we're going to pass out in the parking lot or if we're uh, walking into church, or if we're walking into a restaurant, whichever, we're always going to have five, ten copies and just pass them to whoever we pass by. Uh, and then I remember once we got the office on Cameron Road, and uh, then it became an issue of how late they had to work and whether or not we would ultimately end up spending the night on a sofa mattress from time to time, a blow-up mattress, uh, so that they could finish doing what they had to do. Uh, always dedicated, always Hardworking, uh, I say all the time that my parents uh, kind of originated the term no days off uh, because throughout the 20 years that they've had the paper, they've published on a consistent basis. I would say that my parents are so devoted to our community because they ultimately see it as their community as well. Uh, they value it. Uh, when we moved here in 1993, uh, a lot of things weren't as built or as weren't as developed or uh, built to the points that they are now. But it was a nice area. Uh, families did walk, and we did go to the park, and we would go to our local community library and read books. And uh, it just was a good community that you would want to live in. And just over time, with all the population changes and shifts and all the things that have gone on with even foreclosures in South Cab community, such a big cause and uh, story that they covered with, uh, when it was pointed out the number of foreclosures that were uh, occurring in South Cab in relation to any other, I believe any other uh, county or municipality in the country. Uh, and just seeing that happening, seeing almost a decline in uh, the schools, which is almost unacceptable if we live here and our children want to go to a good school, they should be able to go to a good school. Uh, and having that passion and not just saying, oh, we'll just get up and move <laughs> to somewhere else where it's nice, instead of saying, well, no, we're going to stick it out here. We're going to try to do what we can to be a good influence on the community and to uh, bring them what they need. Yeah. Over the years, Crossroads News has earned a reputation for getting to the heart of issues, asking the hard questions, and reporting all of the facts. For the community, it has become the source for truth. I think the impact of Crossroads News has been phenomenal. Uh, some people refer to it as the Bible. You will hear them say, well, I read such and such, or where'd you read that? Oh, it was in the Bible. So, what do you mean? I said, Crossroads News. So yeah, everybody said, well, it must be true then. So <laughs> if it was in the Bible. But uh, I think that uh, its impact has been phenomenal. Um, I feel that democracy does not work until and unless the media does its job. And I think that until and unless all the facts are known, the whole truth uh, is not known. And the staff and certainly Curtis and Jennifer uh, are quite diligent in trying to drill down and dig down to the last uh, iota of, of, uh, of truth 
when they go out on a story. Much of the information that they have advanced would not have gotten out were it not for people having the opportunity to read it because the major organs, uh, let's say the AJC, just wouldn't have the interest or the staff to just drill down to a local level. And uh, you know, as they say, sometimes all politics is local and a lot of this stuff is politically driven. Uh, and I think the Crossroads News is able to really get down to a level that people otherwise wouldn't know what was going on. You know, they look up, well, why are they doing this? Well, the question is, who is they? And Crossroads helps to define who they is. Early on, Crossroads News made the commitment to be a proactive force in the community. In doing so, it has helped shape the DeKalb County we see today. One of my first recollections of uh, Crossroads News, and indeed uh, Jennifer Parker, was during the run-up for a zoning uh, decision on an application to put in a truck stop at Panola and I-20 right where the, uh, the current um, Quick Trip sits. That was planned to be a truck stop. And I remember, uh, I remember Crossroads, I remember Jennifer Parker being all atop that issue, uh, printing uh, news for the community that galvanized uh, community opposition to that proposal. And it was, it was almost like uh, Crossroads was a uh, clarion call. It was, uh, well, or should I say that it was like Jennifer represented a clarion call to the community to, to rise up, come together, and fight uh, that particular application. If the truck stop had won, uh, I don't think that Panola and I-20 would have the same character that it has now. In addition to its impactful reporting, Crossroads News has committed itself to the overall well-being of the community. While looking back on its history, it is also pushing forward for a better DeKalb County. Crossroads News currently hosts four annual community expos at Stonecrest Mall, focusing on health and wellness, summer camps, families and back to school, and seniors' baby boomers. And in 2005, the Crossroads News Foundation established the annual Elizabeth Andrews Memorial Scholarship to provide support for deserving students pursuing studies in communications. Crossroads News has also embraced the world of technology. In addition to the newspaper you see in the racks, each week's issue is readily available online through your tablets, smartphones, and other electronic media. While Crossroads News welcomes feedback from its readers via the website, it also communicates via Facebook, Google, YouTube, and Twitter. Wherever you need them to be, that's where they are. Crossroads News. Looking back, pushing forward. Happy 20th to Jennifer, Curtis, and all the great staff at Crossroads News.